you a literature lover? Are you tired of reading literature that does not resonate with our times? Do you have questions about literature? If so, welcome to the podcast My Two Cents Worth with Odilia Wakesho Mamburi, the platform that discusses literature in relation to our times. I'm a professional English and literature teacher with a master's in literature. Critiquing literature is my passion. To put it into perspective, I am uniquely Kenyan and relevantly African, hence my focus, African literature. In this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts and opinions on what had started earlier, the African youth to lend an ear to African literature. I'll be picking on some of the glaring optimism that is highlighted to us by various African authors. Please listen till the end, you'll definitely have food for thought. Let us sail in. To begin with, Nadine Godima shares her optimism through her endless and shrinking bravery in her novels that speak out to human thoughts by drawing associations of what is personal and communal in seeking freedom. A good example is a no time like the present that explores the bridging of the gap from pre to post apartheid in South Africa, which elevates the greatness of what freedom is against the social turmoil, which may seemingly be pronounced, but is rather a question of having a personal reformation. Secondly, in Edward Said's Orientalism, he consistently yet aggressively debunks the notion of the superiority of the West and terms it as an indicator of the East being brainwashed. Let us have a hold on this. It is a clear description of what we the African youth tend to have been trained to think and act as inferiors, hence as a dire need for us to seek solace on our uniqueness as Africans. Wallon Sheinka's points in Shuttle in the Crypt, though on the surface might seem to be irrelevant to the understanding of questions of our age, it is as it repeatedly exposes the personal deep-seated anger for his nation at that time, in quote, unjustified confinement. It is rather a reminder to history for us, the African youth, to appreciate what our people at that time had endured to fight for a safe heaven in Africa that we so enjoy today. The least we can do is to optimistically make our African nations better and not grapple into complaints. In Mishere Gidai Mugo's My Mother's Poem and Chimamanda Dichie's notable works, Example, Papal Hibiscus, Americana, a feminist manifesto, and many others share the same ideologies to bring forth an individual's freedom and a redefined new identity within the constructed social and cultural groups, though from a feminist point of view. The underlying message is the aspect of us, the African youth, to be bold enough to redefine things that deem us not enough. In Mukoma Wangugi's Logotherapy and Ebenezer Agu's A Triangle of Time and Aging, both pay homage to the journey that one has taken personally in finding a meaning to life and finding a voice to give forth appreciation to the littlest things around us whilst being optimistic to what life brings. This is also heavily seen in Yvonne Award's The Dragonfly Sea. I cannot reiterate any further what Daily Nation Kenya had stated. It is a story, open quote, offers a new journey of liberation, discovery, reflection, and even new imagination, end quote. To mark my conclusion, the youngest African youth writer, Safia Elhilio, in her remarkable work that albeit speaks volume to any person that recalls being a kid. The novel, Home is Not a Country. Honestly, after reading this book, I got to understand how often we forget that we have an unfathomed great power to draw what we want our lives to be, a question of how easily we predestine our future. My question therefore is, how do we want our African literature to be? Will it still be relevant to our future generation a century from now? Allow me to pause and say, African youth, lend an ear. Indeed, lend an ear and see that African literature is a go-to literature as a source of solace. That's all I have for you today. Kindly subscribe and share this podcast with your family and friends. Thank you and see you next Saturday.